Put options are very similar to call options. They're just the opposite. A put option is a financial contract giving the holder the right, but not the obligation. So again, it's an option. We're not obligated to sell a stock by a certain date. Now, every single word in this definition is exactly the same as the call option, except for this one, sell. So the call option was the right to buy a stock by a certain date. Put option is the right to sell by a certain date. So if I own a call option, I want the price to go up of the underlying stock. Whereas if I own a put option, if I'm long a put option, I want the price of that underlying stock to decline, right? And it's the same down here. So we can pay a premium to be long the put option. So we own the put option or we can receive a premium to be short the put option. So that's where we're selling the put option. Now let's look at how we might do a payoff diagram for an investor that is long a put option. So this investor buys a long put option contract and it has a strike price of $100. So this is just like the call option examples we did. X equals 100. The premium for the option is 10 bucks. So that's the same as well. Premium's 10 bucks. And so now we have this new variable p p is equal to the value of the put option and p is equal to the maximum of either zero or the strike price x minus s so this is very similar to the value of a call option but in the call option it was s minus x so it was the value of the stock's price minus exercise price for the call option but for the put option the put option actually becomes more valuable if the price of the stock decreases so if you can see if s goes down then the difference of x minus s will increase in a positive direction so the profit to the person who is long a put option is going to be equal to the value of the put option minus the premium that they initially paid to take ownership of that option so let's go ahead and draw this payoff diagram so if i bought this contract for 10 bucks i'm going to be down i'm going to be down 10 bucks so if this price is anywhere a hundred bucks or less i'm going to be down 10 bucks that i paid because i cannot exercise it now once it gets to 100 bucks my line starts ticking up like that and then I hit my break even point of 90. And I'm just going to draw this out. That should be a straight line. I just screwed it up. But anyways, let's walk through it. So if we get to 100, then the value of this put option is equal to 100 minus 100. And then the profit is just going to be equal to 0 because that 100 minus 100 is 0 minus the 10 bucks we paid. So we're still down 10 bucks. However, once we get to 90, our break-even point, that means that we can sell this for $100, so what's actually worth $90. So we've sold something for $10 more than it's worth. So that's why this put options value is 10 bucks now. And we have the profit of 10 minus the original $10 premium that we paid up here. And that gives us a, a value of zero. So that is our break-even point right here. But then let's say once we get to 80 bucks, once we get to 80 bucks, we should be up $10. And that is because we're selling something for $100 that's really only worth $80. So this put option is worth 20 bucks and our profit is equal to 20 bucks minus the initial 10 that we had paid for premium, which gives us a $10 profit. And we can see with this long put option contract, the worst we can ever do is lose our original $10 right here. This is our $10 loss. But the best we could ever do is equal to the basically the exercise price minus the premium that we paid. So if this stock's price went all the way down to zero, I can sell a stock for $100 that's worth nothing. So that put option would be worth $100. Bucks, but then I'd lose my $10 premium in my profit calculation and I'd be up $90 bucks total. What if the investor in question is actually short a put option? So this investor sells a put op a short put option contract for a strike price of 100 bucks and a premium of 10. 
So all this stuff is the same up here. And then now we have this put option, the value of the put option, which is the same as when the investor was long the put option. That's just going to be equal to the maximum of the exercise price minus the strike price or zero. The difference here, though, is just like when we were talking about the calls, this is swapped around. So now that we're short the put option, we actually profit if the premium is higher than the value of the put option. Whereas on the long side, they profited if the put options value was higher than the premium. Now let's draw this payoff diagram. So when I sell this put option, I'm up 10 bucks. I've made $10 and I will continue to have made 10 bucks until this goes past 100. And then now I have the same break even point as the last time, which is $90. And so I'll walk through it one more time. The reason this is 90 is because I've made my $10 premium right here, right? My premium's 10. Now, the person I've sold this to is going to have a value of 90, or sorry, 100 here minus 90. So that's worth 10 bucks. So this put option here is worth 10 bucks. So that's 10 minus 10, and that becomes a profit of zero. And so that $90 is the break even point. And then once we get to 80 bucks, now I've lost $10 because their value right here is 100 minus 80, which is 20. So I'm at 10 minus 20. So I'm down $10 there. And I can lose all the way up to 90 bucks if this stock's price goes to zero.